Hey guys, um, so we are live. Welcome, who's here? Uh, we are supposed to be doing revision classes for those of you who are here. Oh, hi, Summer, how are you? Uh, Saduk is here also. Hi, Saduk. Assalamualaikum. Okay, um, so today we, we are going to be doing the revision classes for uh, consumer behavior. So, yeah, all is good. All is good, Alhamdulillah. It's been raining uh, off and on, which is good. Uh, the temperature has uh, been under control. Uh, how are things over where you are? Are you still in SWAT? And how's the weather in Swat? It must be cooler than here. A hot day, okay. Here as well. I went out for shopping today, grocery shopping. Um, but yeah, uh, but fortunately, you know, it's it's been a, a lot better. Uh, it keeps, you know, the temperature keeps getting checked. So it's not too bad, I guess. Okay, so I'm just putting up this uh, thing. Today we're going to be discussing uh, uh, motivation and involvement. Um, let's see. Uh, let me try to load up this slide. I'm just trying to load it up right now. So the thing is, we don't actually have like one specific, um, you know. We don't have one specific uh, tool software for this. So I have uh, found a few softwares which help me do this. So there's one separate software. Uh, what that does is it connects my camera. Uh, I've got an external camera which I use, uh, DSLR one. It connects the camera to my laptop. Uh, then there's another software which takes the camera and lets it be used as a webcam. Um, then there is uh, yet uh, another software which connects both of these two together so that I can use it on uh, YouTube live. Uh, so yeah, that's the uh, interesting uh, thing with this. Um, and then the thing with the PowerPoint slide is I cannot just present the PowerPoint slide as it is. What I have to do is I have to convert uh, each slide into a JPEG a picture. Um, 
once each one has been converted to a picture, then I have to throw that into the software I've got, which connects me to YouTube Live. Uh, so a bit of a complicated process, yes. Uh, once uh, that is done, done, then I have to uh, control each slide individually, obviously, you know, just like we do in PowerPoint, but it doesn't work uh, the same way. So I have to get the PowerPoint slides and the video position in the right place. Uh, so both things are working properly. You know, those are the interesting new challenges of doing online teaching. But I guess uh, you get used to it after a while. Uh, there are some technical issues, though. Uh, sometimes you run into the internet could be one of those. Uh, I had an issue with um, with the RAM on my computer. I've, I've been having an issue for a while now, so I keep trying to fix that. Uh, still waiting for somebody who can do this on a Mac for me, uh, because the thing is, uh, you know. On a Mac, um, it's it's a lot harder. You don't get the same hardware, and people, uh, you know, the same people cannot do things that do normal with normal PCs. So, yeah, those those are the interesting dynamics that we are stuck in at this point in time. But I guess you know we have to uh, do as best as we can. So I think it is loaded now. Uh, I'm just going to see. It should be working as a rule. OK. Uh, here. Um, Okay, so you guys should be getting something in there, right? Yes, it's kind of working right now. Um, hmm. Okay, that's a lot better. Um, okay, let's do it this way. Clear background and... Um, Next, we need to move this about. Where do we move this? Let's move it down, maybe here somewhere. Yeah, I think that should be OK. OK, so. Um, just. Um, I'm just going to paste the thing. OK, so we are going to kick off now huh. with our session for today. Um, so one of the key things for consumer behavior, for understanding the behavior of consumers, is to understand um, you know, their motivation, what level of motivation customers have, uh, what motivates them to buy things, to use things. Um, because once we know these things, uh, then it is easier for us as marketers, it is easier for us as business people uh, to influence those motivations, to get customers um, to purchase our products and services. If you studied human resource management, HR, um, or you work in HR, um, usually you know, HR works in this area, um, especially when it comes to employees, motivating employees. But motivating, motivation is, is something that we all do. You know, it's, it's a natural process, a natural phenomena. Um, all of us are involved in, in motivating people. 
um, we often do it without knowing we are doing it. We, we are in, you know, uh, involved in motivating our friends, our families to do things the way how we want things to be done. So yeah, um, motivation is, uh, you know, an important bit, but we're all doing it. Um, from a purely definition perspective, um, motivation is the driving force. Um, so motivation is the driving force within individuals that impels them to do action. What type of action? You know, um, it is uh, produced by a level of tension, right? Uh, in your head, in your mind, um, you know, there's some sort of need that is unfulfilled. Now, it could be something very basic from, you know, I'm thirsty, I need to uh, drink water, okay? So that is something that is going to, uh, you know, motivate you to go and uh, get a drink or something. Uh, it could be something bigger than that. It could be something like, you know, I need to go from uh, here to London, for example, or New York or whatever. I need to go on a holiday. So there's some sort of tension and uh, there's an unfulfilled need and you want to fulfill that need. Now, that need, unfulfilled need, uh, leads people, leads customers, leads people uh, to either conscious or subconscious attempts to reduce those tensions. Um, so either we consciously do things or we subconsciously do things to reduce the tension. And um, uh, this whole talk is about uh, how customers go through this whole process, what are things that uh, lead to the tension, uh, what are things that uh, help them reduce the tension. Uh, here's a model of the motivation process. So the way how it works, it starts with the unfulfilled need or wants or desires. Um, so a customer will have an unfulfilled need, it will have unfulfilled want or an unfulfilled desire. Um, Just checking one thing, sorry. Um, just going to move this mic up. There's a noisy bird outside. I don't know if you guys can hear it. It's a very noisy bird. I think the bird might have given some babies outside and it's so noisy, it's picking up on my mic here. Uh, okay, so once again, uh, we look at this. So customers have unfulfilled needs, wants, or desires. And that leads to attention. So in your mind, you feel there's a need, uh, you know, there's a gap, you need something, you want something, there might be desire that you're looking to fulfill. And that leads to a drive. The customer will go towards uh, trying to achieve that, um, you know, gap, fulfill that gap, to fill the gap, uh, to fill the unwanted, um, you know, unfulfilled, sorry, uh, to, to fill the unfulfilled desires. Um, and that will lead to a behavior, okay? Uh, the behavior obviously could be a number of things. It could be going out and shopping for something. It could be going out and getting a drink, um, whatever. And then that will lead to either you fulfilling your goal or uh, you not fulfilling your goal. Um, now, based on your you know, goal fulfillment, um, you will have a reduction in your tension. So you will be less stressed out.
Okay, I've got a very noisy bird sitting right outside my window. Uh, maybe it might be in stress. I'm just going to go check what's happening with the bird. <laughs> okay. <laughs> It's a very noisy bird and it's sitting right outside my window and it refuses to go away. So it's not really scared of me. Um, is it very noisy or a little noisy? This is... Dude, what are you doing? We're taking a class. Can, can't you see? Coronavirus lockdown here. Okay, um, how to solve this situation? There must be a way of solving this situation, right? I can reduce the mic somehow so that the noisy bird is not. Uh, is it very noisy? I mean, can is it? Oh. Okay, I'm going to see, reduce the mic volume and get it out from here. So input, external microphone. Don't know what to do with this bird. It just doesn't want to uh, leave, I guess. Just give me one second, guys. It's just bothering me. I can't think. I'll just be back in a second. I'm not sure why the bird was distressed. I could not find a baby or anything that it might have dropped. Uh, sometimes, you know, that happens. But it was really no noisy, getting to my head, actually. So, uh, where were we? Sorry about that, guys. Uh, yes, uh, the model of the motivation. Uh, the model of the motivation says that customers have unfulfilled needs, wants, or desires. And those unfulfilled needs and wants or desires lead to attention. So that's, you know, in your head, you feel, um, you know, there's, there are things that you need to fulfill. Uh, that will lead to a drive. You will do certain actions. You'll do certain behaviors. Customers will, will do those sort of things. It could be going online, looking for information, going to a shop, going to a mall, uh, talking to friends who might have, you know, had similar issues or whatever. A number of things can happen here. And that would lead to a behavior. Uh, your behavior could be going and purchasing the item, uh, drinking the water, um, whatever. You try to reduce your stress. That's the idea. So once you know you you have the behavior, you do something, which is purchasing that product or using that uh, product or service. It will either lead to goal fulfillment or uh, tension reduction. Um, if the goal is fulfilled, then the tension will be reduced. Um, and usually what happens is, you know, human beings, we, we get more tension. So we fulfill one goal, then we move on to the next one. Um, or it's possible that your goal was not fulfilled. 
you know, your behavior did not lead to that um, unfulfilled need, desire, want um, being fulfilled. So uh, then you'll have more tension. And during this whole process, you will have uh, a learning process. You'll be learning um, based on your experiences, based on uh, talking to people, based on things you're, le- you're reading online. Um, all of that will be leading to a learning process. So customers are, are learning uh, constantly. And there's a cognitive process going on also in the mind of the customer. There, there are things that are happening. And each person behaves differently uh, compared to others. And as marketers, we need to understand how people think, how people behave, what are the things that, that get people going. Um, now, when we talk, talk about needs, there, there are different types of needs. There are innate needs, which are called uh, physiological or biogenic needs that are considered primary needs or motives. Um, and then there are acquired needs, you know, generally psychological. Um, they need needs that are considered secondary needs or motives. So innate needs are the basic needs for food, shelter, water, those type of things. And acquired needs are things that we learn uh, based on our experiences, based on society, based on what people tell us. Uh, so the innate need would be, I need to go and drink water. The acquired need would be, I need to drink a particular brand of water, for example, or I need to drink, um, if I'm thirsty, that's the innate need. Then the acquired need would be, oh, I need to have a particular type of drink uh, to fulfill the innate need. Um, so the, the types of motives include rational motives and emotional motives. Rational motives are more... Uh, according to objective criteria. So you're comparing two two mobile phones. And if you're purchasing the phone based on the rational motive, you'll be looking at, well, uh, which one's got a better camera? Which one's got more RAM? But emotional motives are goals that are chosen according to our personal or subjective subjective criteria. Um, Now, things like uh, desire for social status or brand image, uh, etc. Those things will come under emotional motives. So if you choose a, a mobile phone, not on the basis of the RAM memory and the camera and things of that sort, but based on the brand, because that particular brand is one that is used most mostly by your friends, by your colleagues, uh, then you're going for an emotional motive as opposed to the rational motive. Then we've got latent motives uh, or latent motives and and manifest motives. Uh, The latent motives are um, motives that the consumer is unaware of or unwilling to recognize. Uh, And it's harder to identify for for both the company as well as the the customer. Uh, Require projective techniques to identify. And and still, you know, most companies will not go into that area. They'll simply uh, not try to identify those motives. Then we've got manifest motives, motives that the consumer is aware of and willing to express. So the customer will tell us either in a questionnaire or in an interview or some focus group or or some sort of research um, that we do, we will be able to find out what those manifest motives are. And and customers are often uh, willing to share these with us. Goals. What are goals? Um, we've got generic goals and product-specific goals. Generic goals um, are um, categories of goals that consumers see as a way to fulfill their needs. For example, I want to get a graduate degree. I want to get a master's degree. I want to get an MBA. Then there are product-specific goals. Uh, they specifically branded products uh, or services that consumers select as their goals. Uh, for example, I want to get an MBA in marketing from Oxford University, right? So that's a very product-specific goal. Generic goal, I want to get a graduate degree, a master's degree. Product-specific goal, I want to get an MBA uh, in marketing from Oxford University or Harvard or MIT or whatever you want to go to. So how do customers uh, select their goals? Um, Goals are selected by an individual depending on a number of factors. And uh, think about it for yourself. Um, when, when you put yourself in these shoes, shoes uh, you know, your own, uh, look at your own experiences for this. Um, each person has got different experiences. And based 
based on the different experiences, you have got different goals. Um, for example, I know a lot of people in, say, uh, you know, a, a lot of African countries prefer to buy big SUVs. They want to buy the big SUVs because uh, their personal experience tells them the roads are not very good. Uh, therefore, if you were to have a car, uh, the car might get stuck somewhere or you might damage uh, the parts of the car uh, because the road will uh, hit the underside of the car. Therefore, having a big SUV will keep you protected and ensure that you get from point A to point B without any issues or troubles. Uh, in contrast, if you live in uh, one of the big European cities like London, Paris, uh, Berlin, etc., uh, you are likely to go for smaller and more compact cars, especially uh, in a city like London, um, which is very old and the streets are, are very old. Consequently, the roads are very narrow. Um, so it's very hard to drive big cars in a city like London. So what you do is you try to get a compact car. Um, the compact car will allow you to get through, find parking easily. Um, so consequently, your personal experience will motivate you to buy one particular type of car over another car. Um, it also depends on your physical capacity. Can you actually you know, do certain things? Um, if you can achieve that particular thing, um, you know, and, and different people have got different capacities. So, for example, um, when, when we talk about losing weight, it's, you know, it's, it's a big factor nowadays. A lot of people, uh, a lot of companies that are into this now. Um, well, there are different ways of lo losing weight, uh, and that depends now on your, um, you know, the person. Um, so different companies have targeted, segmented their, their market based on the physical capacity of customers. So some companies, what they do, they focus on the exercise. Some will focus on, on weightlifting. Some will focus on the diet. Uh, uh, some will focus on mental, uh, you know, uh, thinking, you know, setting a mental frame of mind, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Um, why are they doing that? Because different people have got different capacities, physical capacities, and consequently, uh, they can do certain type of things. They, they will not be able to do other type of things. Um, the prevailing cultural norms and values in a particular region, city, country, society, whatever, will impact your selection of goals. Um, so in your particular you know, norm and your culture, uh, if everybody is doing one particular thing, you are more likely to do that one particular thing. For example, if you live in a town, a coastal town, and a lot of people have boats, they, they go out fishing or they go out sailing, um, then you are more likely to go out and purchase a boat to do those type of activities. If you play, live in a town or area where people like to do a lot of biking, so if you are in Holland, for example, um, whether you like biking a lot, uh, eventually you're going to get influenced by, by the culture of, of the country um, and you're going to go and purchase a bike and start using a bike more often. Um, and finally, the goal's accessibility in the physical and social environment. How accessible is the goal? Do you have the financial capacity to, to get the goal? Do you have the physical resources to get the goal? Uh, uh, can you can you you know if obviously if you want if you like sailing and you live inland somewhere uh, that's not going to be possible or if you don't live near a lake or any bo body of water then it's not going to be possible physically it's just not, you know not doable um, so goals um, that are accessible to the customer both physically and in the social environment uh, are things that uh, customers are going to select as their goals. The ones that are not going to be um, accessible, either physically uh, or in socially, then the customer is not really going to go for those things. Now, when we look at motivations and, and goals, um, we have positive motivations and negative motivations. A positive motivation is a driving force towards some object or condition, so something that makes you go towards something. A negative one is on the other side, where it drives you away from a particular thing, object, or condition. So a positive motivation uh, leads to an approach goal. 
uh, where a positive goal towards which behavior is directed. So there's something positive you want to do. Um, you feel that MBA degree, you feel that master's degree is going to help you uh, get a better job. So there's positive motivation involved in that. Um, you feel coming late to, to work is going to get you fired. So there's negative motivation and you want to avoid that particular thing. Um, so there's the behavior will change for the customer. So for some things, you know, you avoid uh, where you have a negative motivation and there are things that you want to go towards which have positive motivation. Now, motivation is, is very dynamic. Um, uh, our goals, our needs, our wants are never fully satisfied. Um, and new needs, new wants, new desires, they, they, they emerge and they happen on, on a constant basis. We were always changing, we're always coming up with new things. Um, so that's why companies, what they do is they're, they're constantly learning about their customers. Uh, they, they constantly want to find out uh, what is it that motivates our customer, what is it that, uh, you know, is going to you know, satisfy our customers' needs, our customers' wants, our customers' desires. Uh, consumers are more aware of their goals than their needs. So goal I want to achieve, um, that is something that is more, you know, you know, psychologically people are more aware of those. Needs are things that they may, might not be as much aware of as compared to the goals. Uh, Consumers' values, personality, self-concept, influence consumer goals. So there's a lot of factors that influence the goals that a customer will choose. Um, the values that they have, the personality, and the self-concept all have an impact on the goals. And obviously, you know, consumers have got multiple needs. Okay. So all of this, when we look at this, you know, it's, it's very, very uh, uh, interesting and it's very challenging at times for marketers, for, for businesses. Uh, it's challenging for businesses and marketers because consumers are dynamic, they're changing, the motivation is changing, um, the needs are changing, uh, they're evolving on a constant basis. Uh, consumers, uh, you know, with different values, people with different personality, with different self-concept, the culture, the environment, all of those are, are having an impact on um, the motivation for, for customers. So uh, yes, it is not an easy thing um, you know, to, to do, trying to understand consumers or people in general, whether you're doing it uh, in marketing, trying to understand consumers, or you're doing it in HR, trying to understand your employees. It is very, very challenging, it is difficult. And other things that influence this are past experiences. So if you had a positive experience, you will um, you know, do things differently. If you had a negative experience, you will do things um, obviously differently because then you will avoid uh, certain things. Um, sometimes what happens with, with motives is that they conflict with each other. Okay? Uh, there are three types of motivational conflict. There's an approach-approach conflict when a cons customer or a consumer is drawn towards two positive goals. So you can do this thing, you can do that thing, uh, but you only can do one of those two things. Uh, physically or uh, from a financial resource perspective, you might not be able to go for both. Uh, then it could be an approach avoidance when the goal object has both positive and negative quality. So you, you, you want to do it, but then there could be negative things. You want to go skydiving, but then the negative thing is you're scared of heights. Um, you know, so there's this positive, there's there's negatives. Um, avoidance, avoidance is in the third type of conflict that may happen in in the motives, when the consequences of buying an object is unpleasant, but the purchase does not lead to any pleasure, um, and then it might be necessary. Um, so, uh, car insurance, for example, you know, if if you don't want to buy car insurance, uh, but you know, it's the law, you have to buy car insurance and the whole process of car purchasing car insurance, it may not be a pleasant one. So there's an avoidance, avoidance approach that, that might come into uh, this. 
motives can be aroused in many ways. So for, from a marketing perspective, this is the important bit where we need to understand how do we arouse the motives for, for our customers. Um, there the uh, physiological arousal, which is the hunger, the thirst. It could be emotional, which is daydreaming, you know, about something. Cognitive, which is just random thoughts that come up. And it could be environmental, cues in the environment, you know, smell of food, something of that sort, can influence our motivation and motives. Sometimes there's a defense mechanism that comes in for customers. These are methods by which people mentally redefine frustrating situations to protect their self-images and self-esteem. So, um, you know, the brain, the mind will come up with a defense mechanism, which will, you know, come up with explanations on why things are happening. Uh, for for example, uh, oh, I couldn't, you know, uh, purchase that thing, that that car, that camera, that phone, uh, whatever is too expensive. That restaurant is too expensive. Uh, you know what? The prob probably the food doesn't taste good there, anyways, right? So you you you're telling your your mind, your mind is telling you. Uh, they're coming with defense mechanisms to protect your self-image, to, to protect your self-esteem. Now, there, there are different types of defense mechanisms. Uh, sometimes it leads to aggression. Sometimes it leads to rationalization. Uh, it could be regression or, or withdrawal, uh, projection, autism, identification, and, and repression. And there's a number of other factors that go into this. Uh, we as marketers need to understand some of these because that will help us um, understand our customers better. Um, there are different philosophies that are concerned with arousal of motives. Uh, there's the behaviorist uh, school. Uh, the behaviorist as, um, school basically says behavior is a response of stimulus. So there's something that stimulates you to certain things and that will lead to a particular behavior. Uh, elements of conscious thought are to be ignored. Uh, consumer does not act but reacts. So behavior school says that customers are, are just reacting to things. This could be cues in the environment. It could be social norms. It could be social pressure, uh, whatever. The cognitive school has a slightly different way of looking at things. The cognitive school says uh, behavior is direct towards a goal achievement. So it's not just people doing things randomly. People have a certain goal that they want to achieve, and then they try to go and try to fulfill that. And need is considered um, needs, attitudes, beliefs, etc., in understanding consumer behavior. So we need to understand uh, customers' needs. We need to understand the attitudes the customers have. And we need to understand the beliefs that customers have. Um, so once we understand these things, we are able to understand what type of goals that they're going to select and how they're going to fulfill those goals. One of the key philosophies, one of the key philosophies in consumer behavior is Maslow's hierarchy of needs. And uh, Professor uh, Abraham Maslow, I think he was a professor, um, he came up with this model. And he believed that people have a certain set of needs. Um, and if you look at this pyramid, uh, the needs start at the bottom with uh, physiological needs. So food, water, uh, etc. cetera. Uh, then you have safety needs, uh, protection. Um, then you have social needs friendship, belongingness, uh, then you've got ego needs, status, self-esteem, and at the top you've got self-actualization or self-fulfillment. And basically he said that uh, customers need to fulfill the basic needs, and once the basic need is fulfilled, then you move to the next one, and you move to the next step, and then you move all the way up to the higher level needs. Now this is what, this, is, this was a model that was proposed. Uh, in actuality, in reality, we know it doesn't work 100% exactly in that particular order. Uh, we have seen people who will, for example, forego social needs and move directly to self-actualization, for example. Um, or some people who might forego uh, ego needs, for, for example. Uh, 
so yes generally most people will work you know in this particular order they'll fulfill one need and they move to the next one um, however not all people will go through this particular um, you know this model in exactly the same way as it is presented here um, then we've got a number of other philosophers and scientists who came up with other needs um, I will not go into this in too much detail. You can have a look at it yourself. Um, but there's a whole bunch of philosophers out there who've come up with these, these models that they've come up with. Um, it is in the book that, that has been given to you. So please do um, you know, look at the, the book and read up about these other things. Okay. Now, um, motivational research is something that is very important for companies, for organizations, for brands, for, for people who, who are setting up companies, uh, because we want to find out what motivates our customers. We want to find out what is it that is motivating our target audience, the segment of the market that we want to sell our products and services to. Oftentimes, companies will do qualitative research to uncover consumers' subconscious or hidden motivations. Um, so qualitative research is really um, sitting down and talking to the customer, either through interviews or focus groups. Uh, those are the two most common types of uh, qualitative research that are used. But then we might also do observation. Um, we observe the customer in their uh, shopping behavior, for example. We observe the customer in their natural habitat, uh, where they work, where they live, where they socialize, where they shop. Um, so qualitative research uh, it can be of different types, but usually we do this to uncover what are those things that could be subconscious or hidden uh, motives in, inside the customer's mind. Um, why do we do this? Because customers are not always aware of uh, the subconscious um, or may not wish to recognize things. Sometimes the customer does not want to accept that they want certain things. Um, an example of that is um, my uh, uncle. You know, he is, I think, over 80 years old. Um, he's, he's a war vet, um, and um, he was having trouble hearing. Now, uh, he did not want to recognized he needed the hearing aids, you know. So all of us, the family, we were trying to, uh, you know, encourage him, you know what, uh, you, you, you can't hear properly. We talk to you, we say one thing, you, you respond something else, you need to go and purchase those hearing aids. So customers sometimes, they don't want to recognize they need to purchase certain things. Um, insurance companies, you know, play on that. Uh, you know what, health insurance, for those countries, where uh, you know healthcare is not free, um, or there's no universal healthcare, uh, then you need to encourage people to go and purchase health insurance, for example. Um, so we want to do research as as marketers, trying to find out what are those needs. Um, sometimes we use projective techniques. It could be things like metaphor analysis. We could uh, do storytelling. We could ask the customers to draw pictures, you know, uh, sort photos, uh, word associations, sentence completions, third-person techniques, and so on and so forth. There's a number of techniques uh, which we can use trying to get the customer, uh, you know, to uh, reveal their subconscious uh, desires, subconscious goals, subconscious motivations. Motivation and marketing strategy are things that go hand in hand. They're both very important um, for, for an organization. A uh, company, an organization, um, marketing department would want to identify the needs and goals of the target market. Uh, we want to identify both the latent and the manifest motives. Um, we want to use knowledge of the needs to segment the market and to position our product. So once we know the different uh, types of needs, uh, based on those needs, we will segment our market, and then we'll try to position our product in the mind of the customer. We will use the knowledge of needs to develop promotional strategies. Uh, 
how do we advertise to the customer, what message we want to convey to the customer, uh, what brand image we want to you know, create for our uh, product or service. And we want to obviously try to reduce motivational conflict. Okay. Yes, this thing uh, is, is got positive things. These are po possible negative effects, but the negative effects are, are not that important because they only happen 0.2% of the time, something of that sort. So we want to reduce the motivational conflict that happens in the mind of the customer. Consumer involvement is very important because the level of personal uh, relevance that a customer sees in a product. Um, so a customer will see uh, a certain level of personal relevance um, in a particular product. Um, the types of involvement that consumers could have are enduring involvement. These are long-lasting involvement that arises out of a sense of high personal relevance. Um, or it could be situ situational involvement, short-term involvement in a product of low personal relevance. So long-lasting involvement, uh, definitely, we talked about this earlier, is you know a university degree. Because getting a university degree is something that is not just a short-term thing, but that is something that's going to stay there with you for the rest of your life. Uh, the university you go to, um, the graduate school you go to, that is going to be there for, for a very long time. Um, other products like you know expensive uh, watches, okay, uh, luxury watches. You know, for for those type of things, uh, oftentimes for a customer, it's a long term involvement. They, they'll have the watch for many years, decades, uh, even generations. Situational involvement are short term involvement of a low products thing. Uh, you had a flat tire, uh, you need to get the you know that fixed. Now that's a situational factor, you know. Uh, whether you call a recovery service or you go and uh, find somebody who can fix your flat tire, um, that's a, that's a short-term thing. It's not a long-term involvement. Um, other types of involvement are cognitive involvement, where a rational level involvement in a product or products that are considered to be major purchases. So. Um, something major, buying a house, buying a car, uh, right? It depends from one customer to another customer what constitutes a major uh, product purchase. Uh, it could be a digital camera, it could be a laptop, right? Again, it varies from one person to another person. And then affective involvement, uh, emotional level involvement in, in a particular product or service. Um, you, you feel strongly towards a certain pro type of product or a certain brand um, or, or something. Um, so, for example, it could be, you know, I, I love a particular brand of car. I've always wanted to buy that particular brand of car. Uh, so I will, once I have the money, I have the resources, I have, you know, I've got the right motivation, I go buy that particular brand of car only because I've got emotional level um, involvement in that particular uh, brand of car or that particular product. Um, so for example, uh, I like scuba diving. If I like scuba diving, um, you know, uh, I want to buy the scuba diving gear. I want to have the whole thing for, for myself. Uh, I know you can go and rent those out for you know all the places you go for, for scuba diving, um, but I want to have my own thing. Why? Because I've got this emotional level of involvement in that particular type of product. So it could be a type of product, or it could be a brand, it could be a category of products. So what are the factors that lead to high involvement? Uh, level of perceived risk. Uh, so this could be a social risk, it could be a financial risk, or it could be physical risk. When the risk is high, then you are more involved in purchasing that product. When you perceive that risk is high, you're going to think about that product uh, more carefully. The level of personal interest in product category. The more interest you have, the more involved you are going to be in purchasing the product or service. The probability of making a mistake or buying the wrong product. So if you're unsure, you know, you, you're not really sure, what type of washing machine should I buy? And washing machines are things usually we buy for a long period of time. So you're not really sure what type of washing machine to buy. Uh, 
you you don't have experience buying washing machines. So what are you going to do? You're going to have a higher level of involvement. You're going to spend more time trying to figure out what is the best type of washing machine to buy. Uh, the extent of pleasure in buying and using a product. So there, there are things that, that give you enjoyment, right? So if you like photography, th then buying the digital camera is going to be something that's going to be there. If uh, you like, uh, you know, mountain biking, then the bicycle, the mountain bike that you're going to buy, you're going to uh, spend more time thinking about it, whichever bike you, you want to purchase, so on and so forth. And finally, the number uh, of competitive products and the number of competitive products that are similar to each other. So if you've got a number of products which are very similar to each other, uh, then it's going to be a product that you're going to be highly involved in. You're going to spend more time thinking about this. Um, what are the measures of involvement? Obviously, there's the brand involvement. It could be your ego. Uh, the importance of the purchase, uh, it could be product involvement, uh, situational versus enduring versus response involvement, and there's the involvement profile. So a lot of these things are going to have an impact. Uh, what type of brand you purchase, you might have a preference for one brand over the other. It could be something that, ba that based on your ego, oh, I must have this thing, right? Uh, it could be the importance of the purchase, either to yourself or the people that are going to be using it in your household. Uh, it could be the product involvement. Uh, it could be based on situation uh, and uh, things of that sort. So we have to look at, as marketers, the, these factors. We have to look at what are those factors that are impacting our customers. And finally, involvement and marketing strategy. What is the relevance of involvement in marketing strategy? We choose media according to the level of involvement. So usually print media is considered for those products that are high involvement. You'll see more ads for uh, cars in magazines and newspapers um, than you would see on other sort of things. Television is often for low involvement. That's why you've got a lot of FMCGs that, that advertise in television. Uh, you will often see the ads for Coke and Pepsi and, and food products and shampoos, etc on television because they're considered low involvement products. We will choose the message according to the level of involvement. So based on the level of involvement the customer has, the type of message we want to portray uh, to our customers, the type of message we want to pass on to our customers will vary. And we want to find ways to raise the level of involvement. We want the customer to be more involved in the product purchase so that they will purchase our brand, they will purchase our product, our service. And that's about it for me for uh, this lecture, this session. Uh, hi, guys. Let's see who, who's still here with me. Um, so this was the review of our, um, our session on um, motivation and... Uh, involvement so this will be saved for you guys on youtube those of you guys who still have not subscribed to my channel do so because i'm getting messages sir we don't know when you're online um, if you subscribe to it and click the bell button um, you will get an a message from youtube telling you when i am online when the live session is taking place so um, we move on to the uh, Skype session for those people who are here. Uh, we can do question and answer sessions. Um, we'll try to do a quick one for that. So I'm just going to pass the link to you guys for the question and answer sessions. And here's the link for those people who don't have it. And I will see you guys on the other side.